Hello guys, this is Ronnie Velasquez and today I'm going to give you a small recap on how to create a comparable market analysis. Don't freak out. If I'm going too fast for you, you can always rewind the video or better yet, spend some time with me and I will teach you the proper way of doing market analysis. So let's begin. The first thing that you need to know in order to create a market analysis, you need to have a criteria. The criteria for doing comparison market analysis is number one, you have to uh, compare properties that are the same type. In this case, single family homes to single family homes, condominiums to condominiums, mobile homes to mobile homes, etc. The next thing is that you need properties that are active, pending, backup, and close. You need properties that have changed status within the last 90 days to 365 days. And you need properties that are within one mile to two mile radius of the subject property. You need also properties that have 10% variance on the square footage. That means 10% less and 10% more square footage of the subject property. An optional criteria that you can use also is the same amount of bedrooms and bathrooms same listing type for example equity sales etc so right now I'm going to do a market analysis on a property the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to log into matrix by going into crmls.org I'm gonna click on the matrix login button then I'm gonna click on the next matrix login button and then I'm gonna log into matrix we're gonna go to search we're gonna go to residential detail and we're gonna go to single family because this is a single family. So that takes care of our first criteria, which is same type of property. Okay. We're gonna go to the second criteria, which is active under contract pending and closed the last six months. We're gonna go to our third criteria, which is within a mile radius of the location. So I'm gonna copy and paste the location there. So we're within a mile radius of the location. And we're gonna go to the next um, part, which is the bedroom and bathroom. It's three, it's three. three and one plus. one plus. So one plus, all right. Mm -hmm. So one plus, and then the living area you said is 1600. So watch this, 1600 multiplied by 0.90, that gives me 10% less, that's 1440, all right? So I'm gonna round it up to 1400, okay? All right, and then 1600 multiplied by 1.1, which is 10% more, gives me 1760. You can round it up to 1800 if you want, okay? So that keeps it consistent. And then standard cell. And now we have the results. Now, before we go into the results, I want to go into the map. And I'll tell you the reason why. And it happens, it, it always happens like this. There's some areas, I don't know this particular area too much, but there's some areas that change depending on what side of the street you're in, right? Yeah. Let me give you some examples of that. North Long Beach and Bixby Knowles. South side of the Lamo is Bixby Knowles. Average sales price is $700,000. South side is North Long Beach, average price is $400,000. So $300,000 difference just because of which side of the street you live in. So it is always important also to figure out which side of, so to speak, which side of the street the property is in, because you will notice, especially in Los Angeles, oh my God, Los Angeles is crazy, because you see some property that is selling for 600, and two blocks down is like a million two. Mm -hmm. It's, oh my God, right? There's so much different depending it's a historical area, a non-historical area. There's some properties, some, some areas where they have built out this huge mansion, 3,000 square feet and things like that, next to these areas where, you know, the ghetto part, so to speak, right? So you have to be aware of what's in the area. So right now, I don't know what's in the area, but I can get a feeling of the properties around the area. So I'm looking at this property that is right here. It's just north of the 210 freeway. Mm -hmm. I see there's a couple of listings here. You can see that 980, mm -hmm. 899, a million one. Do you see that? Yeah. And then we go 839, 955. They're actually very consistent. 875, yeah. 830. So this area is consistent, all right? What I'm concerned about is those that go from 600,000 to a million two. Those are the ones yeah, that you have to be like careful with, right? Good. But the area is very consistent. Yeah. So the next thing that we need to do once we go to results here is I want to sort them out from lowest to highest price. So from the lowest price to the highest price. What I want to do is I want to look, I want to see what kind of the middle ground is. I want to get a feeling, you know, what the middle ground is. We're not doing, we're gonna do a price per square feet right now, but what I wanna do is I wanna get a feeling of what is selling there for how much is selling for from the middle to the highest because we're still on the seller's market and properties are still selling for more and property appreciation is still, is still happening. Now when the market shifts and the properties start coming down, I'm gonna be looking at the bottom to the middle, but for right now I'm looking at the middle to the high, right? 
So if I'm looking at the middle to the high, I'm looking at properties here between 902, for example. You see all of these are very close together, 889, 899, 902. You know, we're looking at 940, we're looking at 960, we're looking at 980. And then we have those odd balls here that are a million plus. Those properties there, you need to look at them and you need to see how does this property compare to the property that I have. Let me look at the street, the street view so we can look at what it looks like. I'm looking at the property here. I'm looking at the area here, all right? And they're like smaller single family homes, nothing too fancy, et cetera, et cetera. Location must be the, what is driving the prices up. I'm looking at 900,000 and a million dollars. And if this house was in a different area like Compton, it wouldn't be worth more than six, but because of the area, Pasadena. So now the next thing that I need to do is I need to go and look at all these properties. And I'm gonna start somewhere in the middle here because like I said, right now I'm just doing middle to high. So I'm gonna start around 900,000. And the question in my mind is, how does this property compare to his property? And if it does, I'm gonna keep it. And if it doesn't, I'm not gonna keep it. So that's the next thing is to try to find those properties that compare to this property. Put yourself on, under this assumption. If I were to bring this property to my client and I'll say, here's a property that is comparable to your home, will the client agree with you and say, yeah, that looks like my home? Or the client will say, well, that doesn't look anything like my home. That's what you're looking for, right? That's what you're looking for. You want to have that agreement with the client, right? That's the key. Right? That is the key. That is the key. So I, I'm gonna so I'm gonna just pretend right now that, that this property is is like the same. Here. So I'm gonna select that property, right? And then I go to the next one here. And the question is, how does this property compare to that property, right? If the answer is yes, I'm gonna keep it, right? I go to the next one here. This one here, same thing. I'm gonna keep it. It's the same, right? We haven't looked any, we, we don't have any old balls. What about this one here? Yeah. Has two stories. That's that is a single story. So this one we're gonna skip. We're gonna go to the next one here. How about this one here? Does that compare? Oh, yeah, and you're looking at the okay, pictures, yeah. interiors, things like that. Yeah, okay, all right. So we're gonna keep that one. And then you can do this exercise on your own. Right now with like just testing right now, right? Mm -hmm. So what about this one here? This one, it looks crappy. Yeah, do you think he's gonna like it? He's gonna say, oh yeah, this is exactly what my house looks like, right? No, right? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna skip that one. We're gonna go to the next one, right? What about this one here? Kind of, no? Okay, we're gonna skip that one. Let's go to the next one. And once again, we're doing it a little fast, but you need to go a little slow. Look at the pictures, read the information, yeah, etc. That's two stories, so no, it doesn't compare. Okay, let's go to the next one here. That one, yes. That one, yes, okay, yeah. Another thing that you're looking for is to see if they have pools. Does your property have a pool? because some of these properties may have a pool. This one has a pool, you see that? And I noticed, I noticed that. So we're gonna skip that one because it has a pool for right now, okay? If we have enough comparables, we don't need it. If you need it, then you can adjust for the pool. This one has a pool too, so that would probably not be one. So let's go to the next one here. This one's the story, like larger home, so we're gonna skip that one. What about this one here? This one is nice. This one looks okay. Let me see, does it have a pool? Yeah, it has a pool too. So we should have just removed the pools. What about this one here? That one looks nice, right? But it has two stories. Okay, it may not be exactly the same. This one here looks terrible. And it's selling for, and it's still available. And it's 1.1 million and it looks horrible and probably it's not gonna sell for that. So I'll probably not include that one on the list. So now when I go to results now, and once again, you're gonna have to do this on your own. You're gonna have to do it a little bit slower. So we removed some of the properties here. So we got some of the properties that are there. So the next thing that I need to do is I need to go to Cloud CMA. So I selected the properties I'm gonna use. I'm gonna go to Cloud CMA. And Cloud CMA, what it's gonna do is it's gonna give us a price per square feet. So we're gonna, now that we have selected the properties that we're gonna use as comparables, now we can do a price per square feet. So I'm gonna call this one Villa, Fetch Listings, so we're gonna fetch the listings right now. And I want to take it to the next part, which is the uh, table to see the price per square feet. Cloud CMA will use the properties that you selected and it's gonna do, it's gonna do a price per square feet analysis. You see that? Mm -hmm. Now, do you see how the prices are lower here? Why the prices are lower? Oh, why are they so low? Maybe the properties that we have are larger. Oh, wait a second, oh, wait a second. 
Remember that property is 1600. It was pulling data from title and it's probably pulling the data at 900. I'm like, what the uh, hell? Yeah, yeah, there you go. See, yeah, that's, oh, yeah, 16. there, 16. There you go. I'm like, what the hell yeah, happened here? Because <laughs> Cloud CMA was pulling the, the title, so you got to be uh, careful with that, right? Okay, okay. All right, so usually it doesn't happen, but it happened now. Mm -hmm. So now it's going to tell me the price. Now look at this now. So based on the comparable that we use, and once again, you got to do those on your own mm -hmm. because we did it really fast, but you got to go a little bit deeper. But now is what it's telling me is that on the sole prices, the average price per square feet is 576,500 per square feet. And your property, based on the square footage that you have, going from the lowest to highest, would go somewhere between 893 to 949. And then on the active properties, it will go from 816 to 866. That means that the active property right now is a little bit lower price. But in the, if you combine both the sold and the active together as all, you have an average between 526 and 576. That will put you at 564. And the property will be worth between 875 and 929. You see that? So it's giving you all those averages. And like I said, a lot of people don't use active properties, but I like to keep the actives. And the reason I like to keep the actives is because the actives will tell you where the market is going. And the soul will tell you where the market has been. If you want to remove it, you can remove them too. I can go here. I can go to the list and go to active property right here and just remove it from the list. And there you go. It's removed if you wanted to. You don't have to, but if you wanted to, you can remove it from the list. So now once you have done that, the next part is to package it. And in order to package it, you go to customize report. And then there is certain pages that I use. Now, Cloud CMA gives you a ton of pages that you can use. I don't use all the pages that they Which offer you because there's too many. I use the following. Write them down, okay? So I use title, page, map of all listings, suggested list price. And I put that one up front and center because, quite honestly, that's what they want to hear. And then listing details and comparable property statistics, sole property analysis, and the cover page, which is contact me. So those are the pages that I use. Like I said, Cloud CMA gives you a bunch of pages, but those are the pages that I use. In regards to the format that you want to use, the layout is the two properties per page, and the font I use is Georgia. You don't have to use the same things that I use, but those are the ones that I like the most. So now when I publish a report, it's going to pull out the report. So now once you pull up, the report is going to give you the, if you have a picture of the home, you can upload it there, by the way, so you don't have that ugly you know, picture they put in there. But you have that prepared for, it gives you the map of all the listings. So this right here is your subject, and those are the listings that you select. And it gives you a brief summary of the listings. And then it gives you two properties per page, which is the template that I use. Mm -hmm. It gives you two pictures, the sales price, the status, bedroom, bathrooms, bedroom, bathroom, square footage, and sold date. So you have that. You have two of those on every page. And I use this template because... Two properties per page is very cost efficient because you're only printing a few pages. Right. And then the sole property analysis, it tells you what the price per square feet is on the sole properties, how many days on the market, active listings, how many days on the market. And then finally, the sole property analysis tells you this is what they listed for, this is what it sold for, what is the variance. So you can see here the properties on average are selling for higher than they're listed for. So that area is hot. Like I can see that area is hot from coming from this. So those are the things that you need. So let me copy the link.